boys and girls for another dose of the Michael Deacon program. Coming at you from Orange County this time. My name, in fact, is Michael Deacon. You're listening to the Michael Deacon program. Pleased to meet you. I thank you for joining us here on the Real Deal Media. In a moment, I'll be joined by Mr. Brad Olson. He is a respected author and speaker known for his diverse range of topics. He is the author of the Esoteric series and has been featured on numerous events, conferences, and of course, heard on different media platforms. You probably have even seen him on television. I strongly recommend his books. His website is bradolson.com or go to cccpublishing.com. Now, without further ado, let's bring in Mr. Brad Olson right now in real time. Yes, let's bring him on in. Brad, how's it going, my friend? Hey there, Michael. I'm doing great out here in Urington, Nevada, and it's good to get another dose of the Michael Deacon program. Very nice. I'm glad you're here, my friend. And I do consider you a friend, not like usually, you know, you hear these intros and you hear the, the host say, oh, my friend, but actually you really are my friend. Yeah, we've hung out. We've got to know each other and uh, done quite a few shows over the years. So I consider you a friend as well. Absolutely. And I'm glad you're here. I always enjoy our conversations, whether it's online or in person at a conference. As you mentioned, it's always a rather good time. And Brad, we have a significant amount to cover today. And Brad, including the devastating situation on the East Coast and the inadequate response from FEMA in supporting mm -hmm. our fellow Americans. Oh, it is so heartbreaking to see not only how these geoengineering weather weapon storms have ramped up, but the absolutely inadequate response by FEMA, these organizations that are meant to help the American people, because they're too busy at the border letting immigrants, illegals come over and giving them debit cards for $2,250 and they're only offering $750 to the people of Asheville, North Carolina, and other devastated regions, $750. What can you buy for $750 these days, Michael? Not much, no. not much, especially in California. And of course, additionally, it has been confirmed and also pretty much played out today with uh, Kamala Harris, who made an appearance on the Howard Stern Show. We'll be talking a little bit about that. I have some info to share with you. And we also see that Kamala and Trump are tied in recent polls. And of course, let's also not forget our friend Puff Daddy. Yeah. Oh, boy. That's another one that goes deep. It really does. Yeah. Yes, that situation hasn't really hasn't really gone the way many thought it would go. It's taken a turn for the worse, and some are already saying that he is far more deviant than one Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, this is going to be as bad as all the people that went to Epstein Island for them, uh, and what is being revealed from these Diddy tapes and the freak-off parties is absolute debauchery. It really is. No shortage of topics, but let's start with our friends over in the East Coast, Brad. I know you're friends with plenty of people in the Midwest and the East Coast. And wow, I have plenty of listeners out there. And, you know, for the record, I don't cheer for the destruction of other states. I know there are people out there, Brad, who cheer whenever California is rocked by an earthquake or a wildfire. I'm not one of those guys that, that do that. You know, I don't cheer for people to go down unless you're in Hollywood, then. You know, I do cheer yeah. for that. that. Major difference. No, we don't. We don't want anybody to suffer here. It's it's bad enough that these weapon weather weapons are being employed on the American people. But um, we're all in this together, and we don't need to be divided into us and them. We need to be unified and know that our real enemy are these this criminal elite cabal that is has the uh, capacity to uh, operate these weather weapons and do so much more. Absolutely. And I understand most people don't like California. Again, I just want to drive it home. But not all of us here bend the knee to a tyrannical government. That's for sure. There are plenty of people, plenty of folks out here who love their freedom just as much as you and I do, believe it or not. But yes, a Category 5 hurricane, oddly named Milton, 
Why on earth would they give uh, such a powerful hurricane a rather weak name like that, by the way, Brad? I know they have these sort of already prearranged, but uh, these names uh, have always been a bit of a head scratcher for me. Yeah, well, they go in alphabetical order and they're just picking names. But isn't it interesting that John Milton, who was an author during the time of Shakespeare, in fact, only second only to Shakespeare is the most famous author of the Enlightenment era. He wrote a book called Paradise Lost. And uh, yeah. that is what Milton is going to do to Western Florida. Sadly, you are correct on that. And as you mentioned earlier, there are things that don't seem rather organic about this sort of situation. Uh, I'm sure you know that. I know that. The listeners at home know that. And I'm sure you've seen plenty of people online scuff at the idea of weather manipulation. Yeah, absolutely. And Milton actually crossed over Mexico already. Oh, yeah. And every time a hurricane crosses over land, it either dissipates or just becomes a very minor tropical depression. But now Hurricane Milton is went from winds of 30 miles an hour on Saturday morning to a Category 5 monster and has 175 miles an hour wind in roughly 48 hours. This is an increase in max sustained wind of 145 miles per hour and a drop in pressure of 90 MB in just 48 hours. So this is total insanity. This has never happened before. So 12 hours alone, uh, it increased in maximum sustained winds to this rapid intensification, the sort of explosive growth that usually takes place over 48 hours, right. not 12 hours. So it, this is not normal or organically occurring. It really, not yeah, you're right about that. It, it doesn't seem organic at all. And again, people online are saying, oh, you believe in these conspiracies. They scuff at these ideas. They say they, the government is completely incompetent. There's no way they can control the weather. <laughs> right. That's what they all Except say. Except you uh, see that there are dozens of patents that do exactly that, control the weather, strengthen hurricanes, make them turn at right angles. Um, and when you understand that the Air Force created a document in the 1990s, which was using weather as a force multiplier, and the subtitle was creating and owning the weather by 2025. Well, that's only a couple months away, Michael. I think they've achieved their goals. I believe that to be the case here. And now this is a Rubik's Cube that can be put together. Most of the normies out there are oblivious to a little something called geoengineering. And of course, mm. those who dismiss this idea nine out of ten times, none of these people have read up on any of these issues, none of the things that you just mentioned, nor do they know their history. You know, artificial weather control is a very real thing that our beloved government has been toying with for decades now. Well, they sure have. And I have a chapter in my book, Beyond Esoteric, Escaping Prison Planet, called Geoengineering. I've been researching this subject for many years now. I've even spoken at geoengineering conferences, letting people know that just because you don't see it on the nightly weather report or hear anybody talking about those chemtrails in the sky doesn't mean they're not doing it. And you really have to understand the technology before you can attempt to understand what they're up to. So these hurricanes, they can be started and created and intensified using cloud seeding, aka chemtrails. Then electromagnetic pulses radiate and ionize them so they can intensify and direct their location where they're going to hit land. I remember seeing this old uh, PSA that was put out by Disney, I think it was in the 1950s, when they first started coming out with these patents. It's that old, Michael. Oh, We're my. talking about 70 plus years, but saying that, oh, we'll have the ability to steer hurricanes back out into the ocean where they won't hurt anyone. Back when it was benevolent, talk about this kind of technology. Well, it's only been weaponized and turned against the people at this point. Are you sure about that, Brad? I didn't hear this on Fox News, so I think you might be lying. Uh, 
No, they're saying <laughs> that uh, <laughs> that Kamala's taking the lead. Yeah, right. Yes, but there are those folks out there, though, Brad, that only watch Fox News predominantly. Mm -hmm. It's kind of scary. Yeah, and Fox News is controlled opposition. Right, by the R others Rupert are Murdoch. First. Yeah, it's really alternative media that's given us the truth these days. You know, there was the smith munt Modernization Act that was pushed through by Obama and basically allows the media to lie to us, to propagandize us. Uh, the original smith munt Act of the 1950s was truth in advertising, truth in media. They overturned it. <laughs> How about the word, the inversion of using, oh, we're going to modernize it. The smith munt Modernization Act, that allows them to legally lie to the people. Yes, and they also had to cut down I remember it was back in the 90s. You would see all these commercials for different products. You know, they cut those in half, basically, because people would be calling in at all hours. Mm. Yeah, they don't do that anymore. They don't really editorialize in an objective way. It's just very opinionated um, co-hosts who are reading a teleprompter. Right. And, you know, I do remember going back to 2016, right before the election there, and all the media pundits had it wrong. You know, they were all saying, well, Hillary's a shoe in basically. She's going to win. 99% chance. Well, I'm a gambling man. But right. <laughs> it's just, it's hard, to, it's hard to forget that. You know, it, it's very difficult for me to forget some of these things in the past that we've heard from these media pundits, these experts these people that give off their opinions basically, but they present them as facts and it's it's pretty wild. And of course, all this began as you know, Brad, you wrote about it in your own book. This is uh, the work of Operation Mockingbird basically and it's still going on strong today with the CIA. Oh, of course it is. They think, uh, oh, it went away during the church hearings in the 1970s when we all learned about the Operation Mockingbird, which was planting CIA operatives and all the largest media operations. Well, it's gone one step beyond there, Michael. Now they fully control it. It's called the 4 a.m. talking point. Back right. when all the news agencies had their uh, fax machines on, they would start spinning at 4 a.m. from Langley, Virginia, with all the talking points they wanted to talk about. Now, of course, it's all done with uh, emails and text messages, but uh, the, it's still the same. They're still controlling yeah. the narrative. And that's what's very important to them is to get people to think in the way they want us to think. Luckily, this audience here tonight is a very bright, very sharp, good people at the Real Deal Media. We love them to death, by the way. Shout out to uh, Dean Ryan for putting this together. So we don't really have to convey the fact that what you see on TV is all BS, basically. Even the beloved Fox News Network. Yeah, it's still mainstream media, even though it's controlled opposition. But to their credit, though, Brad, yeah, let's yeah. be honest, though. They, they do say some things that are truthful. But again, it, you won't get the bigger picture, the bigger story of, of everything, especially with the weather. A lot of those folks don't really believe in this sort of thing. They think, oh, cloud seeding. Well, what the hell is that? Uh, but uh, all you got to do is start looking at all the patents. Right. And there are dozens of them that show exactly how they would... Uh, move the the weather around, control these hurricanes. I mean, to me, it's it's why would these patents even be approved? Right. When they're clearly weather manipulation, not only approved but in use. Now, Brad, this might be a little bit redundant, but my question for you, Brad, is: Do you actually believe wholeheartedly that the later the the latest, not the later, the latest weather anomalies are indeed artificial weather control? Oh, for sure they are. It's controlling the weather by 2025. And no coincidence is here, Michael, that we're coming weeks away from arguably the most important election in U.S. history. And what areas are getting hit the hardest? In Appalachia, in Florida, very solid red states and areas where it's very solid red voters. But I don't think we've seen the end of it yet. Uh, we still have a couple weeks to go, and out here on the West Coast, yeah. we're already 
having some uh, volcanoes in Cascadia region, which are starting to show uh, tremors. That is Mount St. Helens, which erupted in the 1980s, and Mount Adams, where the uh, Sea Seti Ranch is with James Gillen, oh, a yeah. friend of mine, spoken at a, a conference there. And now these uh, Cascadia volcanoes are showing these multiple tremors. And just last month at Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, a new geyser broke through, and That's they right. too are having these tremors occurring around there. So the the HARP arrays, which are using frequency and, and basically microwave to heat up the uh, atmosphere, and it basically creates a void where these storms can then flow into the void, but they can also trigger earthquakes. They can also use those frequency weapons to affect the mantle of the earth. And this is what I'm afraid could really get out of control if they start uh, making these volcanoes erupt, right. create massive earthquakes, and then tsunamis on our coastlines. So I don't think uh, we've seen the end of this weather warfare before the election. Right, because I don't think so either. Because way, it looks like Trump's going to win it all uh, to shut it down with all kinds of disasters so they can call off the election. And Brad, just a quick question here in terms of earthquakes. Have you experienced anything that was pretty significant? Yeah, I was in the Loma Prieta earthquake in Santa Cruz in October 1989. And October, uh, out here on the West Coast, we have a really late summer on the coast, and they call it earthquake weather for a reason. And I don't know if the Loma Prieta I've never come across any evidence that that was triggered. Uh, sometimes, like the big earthquake in San Francisco, you can have just uh, fault lines that erupt. The San Andreas Fault Line, which goes all the way down to uh, Baja, Mexico, and then right. up to sea uh, in Northern California. And, you know, that reminds me of the great quake of 2010 out here in Southern California when I was in El Centro. And there was a major seven. Well, they listed as 7.2, but at the time I got an alert that said 7.4. And that oh, was wow. on Easter, by the way. It was a, I believe it was on a Sunday. And the holy crap, uh, Brad, I, I thought Planet X was coming. You know, this was uh, 2010. I'd been reading a lot leading up to uh, 2012, but going back uh, years. But I thought, oh my God, Planet X is coming. And this is this quake was pretty wild, uh, Brad. I mean, it was like a scene out of the mo out of a movie. I'm being honest here. I when I ran outside basically, and I saw my neighbors doing the same thing. But I guess you could say almost in uniform, the way they all ran out of their homes and they all started falling down and watching the cars going up and down, seeing that wave. It mm -hmm. was uh, yeah, that wave of uh, of asphalt going up and down. That was something else. Yeah, that's what I experienced with the uh, Loma Prieta earthquake in 89. I had just moved out here from the Midwest, and I felt I saw those waves coming down the road. It's uh, nothing you would ever believe unless it's hard, you saw yeah. it with your own eyes. Exactly. And I'm laying down on the pavement feeling them, thinking, wow, what a force of nature. This is so cool to experience. Yes, and I also remember being extremely disoriented after that. Very dizzy. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, in the case of the Loma Prieta earthquake, mm -hmm. what started out as, oh, wow, what a cool natural phenomenon to experience, <laughs> which was a 7.1, not as big as the El Centro one, but um, big enough yeah. that when we walked to see Santa Cruz, then the plumes of smoke were coming up and we realized, wow, this is, this is pretty big. This is uh, this is going to be loss of life, and sure enough, it was. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild. I mean, if you've never experienced something like that, ladies and gentlemen, ooh, I'm telling you. Even thinking about it now, I get uh, I get some goosebumps going because you know, Brad, being out here and being on the San Andreas fault line, things could go south right away. You know, it could really hit the fan like that. You know, at a snap of a finger. Well, I hate to say it, Michael, but that's why I left California and now live in uh, <laughs> the high desert of northwest Nevada. I don't blame you, to be honest with you. And you, you've you heard of the Salton Sea, obviously, right? Oh, yeah. 
uh, well, you know, I've, I've talked to many, many different scientists and they say, you know, the, the water will return again. It'll take down Southern California eventually. Right. And that's where the San Andreas fault line goes right by the Salton Sea. Yes, it's it's just a frightening sort of concept of, you know, I'm not trying to turn this into a fear porn sort of thing, but these are all things that are happening around the world and things that are very real. You know, they it could potentially happen any time now. I mean, as you mentioned, the, the new sort of a geyser that popped out over there. Yeah, Yellowstone. Yellowstone, yes. I mean, if Yellowstone erupts, we are screwed. Oh, we're totally screwed. And it would really depend on which way the weather was blowing. And in most cases, it blows over the Midwest, which is the richest farmland in the world. And if that were to blow with all the pyroclastic flow, as well as the dust clouds and ash, that would be devastating to the growing uh, regions of this continent. Right. We definitely don't want that. And of course, I'm sure there are inquisitive minds out there that might be asking for some examples of these things that have been sprayed over our heads. And I'm sure there's plenty of those folks out there. And this is why you need to know your history. You know, during World War, what was it, World War II, insecticides they were sprayed all over the battlefield. And of course, let's not forget Vietnam, by the way, those heavily affected by Agent Orange, as you know, Brad. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And that was uh, another product of Monsanto, Monsatan, that uh, still to this day, a lot of veterans of Vietnam are suffering from uh, having breathed that. I was one of the first backpackers to go into Vietnam. Oh, really? In January 1993. Damn, I didn't know that. And uh, I saw the product of some of the GIs, uh, teenage kids, some of which were suffering from Agent Orange. There's a lot of deformities in Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam from all the defoliants. They sprayed it to kill all the the jungle cover so they could uh, fight the Viet Cong more effectively or to uh, expose the Ho Chi Minh Trail. And earlier this year, I was in uh, the country of Laos, and I was up at the area called the Plain of Jars, checking out those big megalithic jars. Oh, yes. And it happened to have been right on the uh, Ho Chi Minh Trail. And still to this day, Michael, you can see giant bomb craters from our B-52 bombers, as well as huge areas of that country, which had once been dense jungle, is still defoliated. My and no, God. Nothing goes. Goodness, that, that must have been a uh, quite quite the experience, Brad. Uh, and uh, luckily, you didn't step on any booby traps out there, you know. No, and and that's still a problem that vexes the Laotian people to this day. Every two weeks, still somebody is either killed or maimed by an unexploded uh, landmine. Wow. Yeah, that's really something else. Here we are in 2024 in the modern era, and people are still getting hurt by these sort of things. Yeah, it, it's uh, crazy to think, but it really is. I mean, uh, Brad. I mean, can you imagine fighting during Viet Vietnam and maybe getting hit by one of those po- those uh, what was it, a tiger trap? You know, with bamboo yeah. and wood wood spikes that are covered with leaves and branches. I mean, all of that sort of thing. You know, you had bamboo whips. You had all sorts of really brilliant sort of booby traps and i can't even imagine going through that brad very very primitive and when i was in vietnam i actually got into the chu chi tunnel complex oh wow which is a huge network of underground tunnels and the americans unbeknownst at the time built their big saigon air base right on top of a pre-existing tunnel system right and they couldn't figure out How are the Viet Cong getting within the perimeter and shooting at the guys in the tent till they found that this this network of tunnels extended all throughout southern Vietnam, all the way into Cambodia and Laos? And that's another reason why they bombed this area so heavily. This is called the Secret War in Laos, and it was one of the fiercest bombing campaigns in world history. More bombs were dropped in Laos than all of World War II to try to knock out this network of tunnels and also to um, defoliate and 
destabilize the Ho Chi Minh Trail. None of it worked. That's the funny thing is uh, we were hitting them with all this high technology and they were doing bamboo traps and winning the war. Oy vey. And just to add some further context to this conversation, for those who don't know, Brad is a pretty big guy, I must say. You know, I'm only about 5'9", 5'10", on a good day. And Brad <laughs> is like 6'7", you know. He's like an NBA player, basically. And Brad, you just said you were in one of these uh, little holes, these tunnels. Well, they did uh, They did make them bigger for okay, Westerners. Okay, okay. I see. But yeah. My, I was going to say, damn, uh, Brad, how the hell did you fit in that? Yeah, they made them bigger, but yeah. we could go in there and there are the little trap doors that you skimmy down wow. and we went in to see the mess tents and the hospitals all underground, all just dug out of the uh, dirt. And all the while, they're doing geoengineering Oof. on South Vietnam in, in the form of uh, making it rain. That was the other way they tried to knock out yeah, the, the yeah. Ho Chi Minh Trail was just flooding it out. And it was called Operation Popeye. And it's a very famous geoengineering program to make it rain. So you got to think, Michael, if they're able to make it pour rain in Southeast Asia in the 1960s, right. why couldn't they put out all those fires in California over the last couple of years? That's a, they yeah. have the technology to do it. Absolutely. You know? Great point there. And, you know, I had spoken to someone who fought in Vietnam and they were my uh, dad's, I believe it was a good friend of my dad's. And I, I talked to him at a Starbucks, you know, it's a very older gentleman. And r one day he was telling me about Vietnam and how, he said they ex that they experienced this sort of very odd monsoon weather, and he believes it wasn't organic at all. And by the way, he wasn't—he was absolutely affected by Agent Orange as well. But you know, I never once mentioned the weather to him. I never mentioned anything of this sort of thing. But he randomly told me that, yeah, the monsoon weather they experienced was definitely not organic. No, it definitely wasn't. And these things can all be manipulated. That's why the, the Air Force has this paper called Controlling the Weather by 2025, which is just a couple months away. And it also, the title is Weather as a Force Multiplier. That's a term that is used in military parlance, saying that they want to find weapons that have multi-use purposes for their end goal. And in this case, if they were to say um, flood the Ho Chi Minh Trail, but also at the same time make it very uncomfortable for those soldiers that right. were bringing the armaments, that that's a force multiplier. So they're always trying to do that to use it for many different ways. And in the in the case of chemtrails, yeah, uh, that is also changing the atmosphere, but it's also making the atmosphere conductive. So now we have these particulate matter in the atmosphere, and it is a force multiplier as well. It can be used in many different uh, modalities. In the case of uh, chemtrails with aluminum in there, making our atmosphere more. Oh, yes. Yeah, making it basically uh, making it conductive. We have a conductive atmosphere now, but also it's good for holograms. And oh this might be what we see in the next couple months, Michael, or maybe even the next couple weeks. If there was an EMP attack, electromagnetic pulse, Russia's got this technology, China's got it, probably Iran too. It could take out our grid. We'd all be in darkness. Oh, yes. I'd be, and, I'd be screwed, Brad. I've got to be honest here. Oh, everybody would be screwed. I mean, some but, people would be able to... to live off grid complete well obviously we're going to be all living off the grid eventually but i mean these people would have no problem without any electricity or anything of, of that nature some will will definitely survive but of course the majority of us will be wiped out and the projection is 50 million americans would die within the first 48 hours wow yeah yeah that's and pretty frightening americans so that's about one in seven in 48 hours if a, a emp attack was comprehensive across the whole country. Right, and I think the main cause of that would be from a fellow human crashing into them or potentially just killing them with a knife or a gun. Oh yeah, it would be a resource war, it'd yeah. be Mad Max on steroids, 
And even good people would turn against their neighbors if they were starving and very fearful. Oh, yes. The neighbor's cat would look mighty fine during that time. <laughs> <laughs> just, and, just like they were eating those cats right. in Springfield, Ohio. And Brad, I got to say, though, would you actually be prepared, though, to go through something like that? I, I am prepared, Michael. And it's one of the reasons I moved to the location I'm oh, at. Okay, I see. I, I do live in an agricultural area. There's mm -hmm. also ranching and flowing water year round. And this is not something I want to see happen. I think all of us would suffer tremendously, but um, I also see the writing on the walls. I've been writing my esoteric series of books and information on this for over a decade. And I know what this criminal global cabal elite want to do, and that's depopulate. And we saw exactly what the bioweapon was all about and nothing to do with uh, common cold. It had everything to do with jacking us up with nanoparticles right. and uh, graphene oxide and so many other things that can also be lit up by 5G towers and different frequencies. Boy, We're they. really entering the age of frequency wars, Michael. I and agree. Most people have no idea what's going to hit them until it's too late. Yeah, so that seems to be the case for 80% of America, really. They're, they're completely oblivious to a lot of these things out there. And, you know, theories began, I believe, if memory serves correct, back in 1996. Wow, I'm pulling this one out of my proverbial backside. But I believe this is not BS here. After the United States Air Force, I think they released a report about weather modification, by the way. Definitely fact check me, if you will, uh, listeners at home. But this report talked about weather modification, and of course, afterwards, the Air Force was accused of spraying mysterious substances over the population of the U.S., and this will tie in another theory of mine, and you mentioned this biological weapon, and I think that's almost how some of this even spread, by the way. I think it was spread in an unconventional way. It wasn't just person-to-person -person sort of sneezing, coughing. I think they sprayed that in, in the in the skies, by the way, Brad. I, I might be completely out of my mind by saying that, but that is a theory I had very early on in late 2019. Well, you're very perceptive, Michael, because it happened even before that, right over San Francisco in, uh, I think it was the 1970s, when they were spraying Legionnaire's disease. Oh, my. Uh, over the population and sure enough people were catching it and some even died so this whoever controls these weather weapons and i would say the air force is certainly culpable as well as the cia it is an anti-human depopulation agenda it is a matter of time before we start seeing really big numbers of people succumbing already the average lifespan of Americans is not only dropping, but plummeting. And that should be the absolute opposite with more knowledge about uh, good health and being able to eat organic food. You'd think that the life expectancy would be getting older, but it's actually on a reverse trend. I agree. And right now we're almost, well, well I, wouldn't, I shouldn't say we're almost there, but I think we might even be following closely is a better way of saying it, of What's going on in Japan? You know, a lot of relationships aren't really going on right now. That's diminishing. Birth rates are extremely down. Nobody wants to be in a relationship at all. And that's kind of, we're kind of mirroring that here in the United States as well, where a lot of people aren't getting married. They're not having families. They're not in relationships anymore. And again, we, that, you know, we could go all over the place. That's opening a giant can of worms there, proverbially, but. I think, you know, not everyone could afford a child either, especially during these times that we're in right now, uh, Brad. It, it doesn't really seem like we would be living the American dream, per se. <laughs> More like the American nightmare. Or the American nightmare, and right. A child into this world, Michael. Oof. With This is a prison planet. Yeah. And it's hard to escape. And little people know how absolutely, utterly manipulated we have been through the mainstream media, through our educational system, through our government, have been intentionally steering us in the wrong direction. Yes. Unfortunately, I, I find that to be the most truest thing currently right now. 
a one world government, basically. In other words, that's what's going on right now. And they want to take everything away from us. And now we're getting in, we're getting back into the FEMA situation. And as you know, uh, FEMA really dropped the ball pretty much like they did with the Hawaii situation not long ago. And they're doing the exact same thing right now. Oh, absolutely. Right now. And I don't even think they care anymore. They, I don't think they do. Uh, I think you're right. Months ago. When they burned it out with do weapons, they don't even care if people know or if we talk about it on the Michael Deacon program because they're just so outrageous with these weather weapon attacks. And right. oh, oh, $750 if oh. you lose your house. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm so glad you said that. But let me just quickly say, you know, those that are in Florida, we hope the best for you sincerely. I'm seeing anything from three to five to ten feet of rain is coming, and it'll Ooh. definitely cause a lot of damage, and many more deaths are coming. Last I checked, the death toll was over 230, by the way. From the Helene. From Helene. Don't wait till Milton hits. Exactly. This is going to be uh, on equal par. And these are, these are storms that are only two weeks apart, and they're both mega hurricanes. Isn't that odd? And, isn't that odd? And in both cases... There is evidence that they are being steered and strengthened using these weather weapons, such as uh, the Harper rays, the which Harper are, are frequency machines. And, and these hurricanes are created via the cloud seeding, so with the chemtrails. Then these electromagnetic pulses radiate and ionize them so they can be intensified and directed. Right. These are right in the patents, Michael. Absolutely. And for those who don't know what a HARP is or what it stands for, that is High Frequency Active Aurora Research Project. Just to add yeah. some clarification for those who are like, what the hell is HARP? What does that mean? But yeah, this is basically <laughs> the Pentagon. Yeah. I was just going to quickly say this is the Pentagon's doomsday death ray, in my opinion. It really is. And then when you also factor in these other patents and trademarks, of weather manipulation, and I'll, I'll just read them for your listeners. Nice. In 1962, they came out with the method of artificially influencing the weather, 3056556. You can look up these numbers at the United States Patent and Trademark Office, all of them pertaining to weather manipulation. In November 2001, you have a patent for a hurricane and tornado control device, 200300085296. Get this one. On September 11th, 2012, you have the method for decreasing the intensity and frequency of tropical storms or hurricanes. So they can totally dampen these things down. Milton does not need to happen. Helene could have been steered just doing circles in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. That's right. That one for decreasing the intensity is 8262314. Then you have in 2013 the apparatus and method for inhibiting the formation of tropical cyclones, 20130038063. Just three, two more to go here. Uh, in 2013 also – the method for influencing the direction and travel of hurricanes, 2013-0175-352. 2020, you have helical, H-A-L-I-C-A-L, uh, uh, artificial generator of tornadoes, hurricanes, yellow dust, and typhoon. And lastly, propagating sound through bodies of water to generate and direct wind for the purpose of moderating and affecting weather patterns. 2020031104. They can all be looked up, and that's the title of the patents in the office. My goodness. So this is very real. You're just being ignorant to think that, oh, nobody can do that. Why would they do that to us? Yes, I've, well, I've seen that. Crap. I've seen a lot of that on social media, by the way. It's been quite ridiculous. And, and this is the only good thing I see coming out of this, Michael, is that it does have the effect of waking people up. I agree. That yeah. now the normies are starting to see this isn't right. 
these hurricanes don't get this much more intense. Oh, they say, oh, yeah, well, that, that's climate change. Oh, boy, yeah. And climate that, change. Here we go. My goodness, um, yes. It's it's quite remarkable what you see online. And again, you know, I'm not on social media 24-7, but sometimes you have to go and look at these things and see what people are saying. And, of course, all of them are scoffing at the idea that it's it's harp, it's this, it's that, it's climate change, it's... Everyone has a, a long list of different excuses to go down. And, of course, they're just saying, well, it's just the weather. That's just what happens, Brad. It's the weather. Well, <laughs> look, the weather changes all the time. We can look at the long-term models, um, The even the last ice age. It gets colder. It gets warmer on this planet. We go through cycles, macro and uh, micro cycles. Uh Climates change. Climates change even on other planets. Climates change because of the sun activity. But what is being rigged is using these weather manipulation technologies to an advance an agenda. And I think this is what really uh, holds up a lot of people from understanding what's going on here, is that there are agendas on planet Earth. And Absolutely. those agendas, yeah, are basically a land grab in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. It happens to be sitting on the largest lithium yeah. deposit in North America. Also, crystals, which can be used for computer chips. Ooh, yeah, yes. those people can't move back to some of those towns. They've already announced, uh, we're not going to allow you to rebuild. Hmm, then what would uh, stimulate the economy in Asheville, North Carolina? How about a big lithium mine that BlackRock and Vanguard are backing. I mean, you can't make sense of the story, just follow the money. Just follow the That's money, cool. yes, exactly. I mean, you could even look at 9-11 and look at what was going on with the stocks. You could see what was being done there. And it, fast forward to modern time and look what happened in Hawaii, the same thing. It's, all, it's always the same players, by the way. Yeah, it sure is. It really is. It's, and, it's disgusting, but again, those out there in Florida, we hope the best for you sincerely again, and we hope you're able to, to get out of there. I mean, there are people out there right now who refuse to to uh, get out of there and evacuate, uh, Brad. Oh, I know, and I'm just looking at the latest update on Hurricane Milton, and this is just uh, in the last few minutes. They are now predicting the Tampa Bay area in particular is going to get a storm surge of 10 to 15 feet. Wow. I don't care how good of a swimmer you are. If it's going to fill up your house, uh, and with the high winds, 180-mile-an-hour winds, this is deadly. That's right. Uh, and I hate to say it, but there is going to be a large loss of life here. Absolutely, yes. That 5 to 10 feet of rain is coming, and it will definitely cause a lot of damage and many more deaths, as I said a minute ago. But yes, uh, also, like you mentioned, uh, the disaster relief funds, those are pretty much drying up fast. And our government loves to send money overseas to places that are highly questionable, to say the very least, Brad. <laughs> Which is very questionable. And, and just this last few weeks, oh, another $8 billion to uh, Ukraine. Oh, of course. Another $8.6 billion to Israel. All the other... Uh, all the people coming over the border illegally get a reoccurring debit card of $2,250. And we're offering homeowners in Asheville, North Carolina, $750. I mean, are you kidding me? That's why I say I don't think they even care anymore. Oh, they don't. Yeah. They want us to be outraged. I agree. And, you know, again, I've lost count on all the places where this money is going, how much money was sent in total. But as you alluded to, yes, we sent money to Israel, the Ukraine, and of course now Kamala Harris is pledging to send 150, uh, $157 million to Lebanon. All while residents of North Carolina are told to kick rocks and pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Yeah. Pretty amazing. It is just uh, unconscionable. And it doesn't the stop there, though, Brad. It doesn't just stop there. Millions were also sent to Syria, Congo. Somalia, Egypt, and of course, Afghanistan and Jordan. And again, here's your $750 American citizen. Your life has zero value. Yeah, and I would say uh, 
not another single dollar overseas until we help our own. I agree. But you know, they're not going to help people from Milton. They're going to be just as uh, SOL as those in Asheville, North Carolina. Why do you think, Brad, that our government prioritizes other countries and not their own? Because it is the international banksters who are calling the shots. And in the case of Ukraine, which was going to be uh, Israel 2.0, a lot of people don't know this, that uh, this is the original Khazarian homeland. This war was intentionally stoked to try to, uh, as a proxy war against Russia, to allow this Khazarian mafia a second place to go. Unfortunately, that's not going to work out. And now uh, I, Israel is creating a larger regional war that's going to bring in Iran and Turkey. It's already including Lebanon and Syria. And they need to destabilize this region. It's the Greater Israel prod Project. Did you know the two lines on the Israeli flag, which are in the color blue, are the River Nile and the Euphrates River that flows through Iran? Greater Israel would encompass those properties. So they actually have it on their flag that they want to take this larger area of land and then while they're at it, why not have Kazaria too? That's where most uh, Akinashi Jews come from anyways, is from right. this area Oy of uh, Central Asia. Oy vey. Oy yeah, vey right. indeed. But yes, I'm very familiar with that Star of David that represents Saturn. And you know what that's all about. Satan. Well, this is what it's really about, Michael. And you and I have Jewish friends. It's oh, absolutely. Not Jewish people, what we're saying is that there is a Satanist group that is this Khazarian mafia that has basically uh, lock, stock, and barrel That's right. gotten away with controlling the money supply. Yes, these and, tunnel dwellers is what we're talking about here. And even Nathan Rothschild says, I care not who controls a country, just give me control of the money supply. And they've done it, right? So right. until we do away with money, Unfortunately, we got to deal with these criminals we and do. what they're up to. Absolutely. And of course, we don't hate the Jews here, by the way. There's plenty of Jewish oh. listeners out there who believe the exact same thing I'm telling you here. And many of them have fed me information about all of these sort of things. So they're very much aware. And there's plenty of Jewish folks out there that are uh, great people out there in uh, Israel and very much against what's going on, very much anti-Zionist. Uh, they're very... Uh, anti-Jewish supremacist, as, as we'd like to call them. But yes, you know, you also mentioned the immigrants. You know, the last thing I read, by the way, was they were getting $9,000. Well, oh. and you know what else they're doing is crossing back over into Mexico, oh, yeah. coming up and making up a new name and getting another An Another round. Been, they've done it four or five times in some cases. Hey, and they say these people are dumb. Uh, no, they're not. Yeah. That's pretty smart pretty smart yeah the american dream is still going strong brad yeah but uh i mean be, uh... let's be honest though brad would you can you really hate those sort of immigrants i mean you know they might be taking advantage of the system but i mean america is the best place in the world let's be honest so you know you can't hate them too much if you were an immigrant oh, yourself I... it'd be like you know there's a pretty there's a pretty good deal you just come over here and get a few grand i mean why not I don't hate anybody. I, I know. I'm, I'm joking with you, of look, course. <laughs> if they're refugees, why not come in? But can we accompany them? We can't right. even take care of our own. I know. 60% of Americans are hand to mouth. They're living paycheck to paycheck. I know. And of course, I, I hear. take care of our own. I hear folks all the time say, well, not, not all the folks, but some of the people that I am friends with, some of them that lean a little far left, they're saying, oh, the economy's great. The economy's fine. I just look at them like they're insane. I'm like, are, are you serious? People can't even afford basic things right now at their local market. I mean, the economy is terrible right now. Mm. Yeah, it's terrible. It's going to get a lot worse. It could break down to a Mad Max scenario, I too. Hope not, if you know. get hit by an EMP attack. Oh, it's done. We're done if that happens. Oh, it's going to be... And as you know, Brad, and as you know very well, technology will fail. 
yeah, uh, they're trying to make us into this technocratic society, and people are starting to realize with uh, Hurricane Helene that you need to have cash on hand. If the power goes out, what good is your phone? You That's can't right. buy anything with it. You can't do anything without uh, electricity 24-7. So, of course, we should never get rid of cash. And you should have items that you can barter with. Yeah, these are all good points, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Be prepared. You know, get your canned goods, get your flashlights, get your guns, get whatever you can, and get ready for whatever is coming down the pipeline here. And yes, we're running down, uh, running down sort of on time, but of course, running down the end of the year. And uh, my God, it's going to get hellacious. Whoever becomes the president, it's not going to matter. I think we're still going to see lots of conflicts overseas. I mean, these are the, the, the ways it works, especially for the military complex system, the industrial complex system. Mm. And let's not forget that the uh, Deagle forecast which was uh, easily accessible on the internet um, until COVID. They had projections that by 2025, America, the USA would lose about 40% of the population. Nobody could really figure out where are you coming from with these numbers? Now I think it's coming pretty crystal clear that this depopulation agenda is very much at hand and we could see a huge loss of life in the next couple months leading up to the end of 2025 my goodness as we wind down here i had mentioned uh, kamala harris a number of times and i had uh, found out that she was indeed confirmed for an interview with mr howard stern and i heard the interview so you don't have to ladies and gentlemen and it seems like kamala had a cozy little chat with the one and only mr howard stern and I got to be honest, Howard Brown nosing was on full display and uh, Harris was laying on that revisionist history real thick, by the way. And, you know, Michael, she was on the list at a P. Diddy party. Well, I know, wasn't she? Yeah, I believe she her and the Obamas, the Obamas were. And oh, yeah. Hillary and what I'm hearing is that those Diddy tapes are worse than Frazzle Drip, that uh, they're terrible, they're sacrifice, they're the depravity you wouldn't even want to speak about. And that could be the October surprise. What if a video of Kamala at a freak off party oh my. came out a week or two before the election? That would be wild if we in fact saw her make a cameo appearance on one of these uh, parties that was hosted by our friend Puff Daddy, the musical genius. <laughs> You know, yeah. he was he was looked at like he was like a musical god at one time in the in the late nineties. I can't even think of a single song of his. <laughs> I don't think that's why where he got his power. He was like Epstein. He was being backed right. to uh, create these honey traps to suck in all the Hollywood elite. And, and he did music stars and they got dirt on him. Yes, he worse than he was the rap game Jeffrey Epstein. You know, yep. you had Jay Z, you had Beyonce, you had, uh, you know, even Leonardo DiCaprio, who was also very part of the Hollywood elite who attended uh, Puff Daddy's parties. He was very much into being at these parties. And of course, you had like Usher, who was a big deal at one time. You had Will Smith, and that would explain a lot of things in terms of our friend uh, Will Smith. But yes, you had all the big names, basically, all the rappers, all the entertainment folks. You know, you had the Mariah Carey's, the the 50 Cent even was there, you know, and he's not a dumb guy. I'm sure he pretty much figured out what was going on and he hightailed it there. But yeah, you had, you know, like Jamie Foxx and other, and the list goes on. It's, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. I mean, I'm kind of uh, thrown back by how many people were partying with uh, Puff Daddy and attending these uh, freak offs, as they say. Oh, those people have got to be uh, shaking in their boots right now, Michael. Oh, I would be. <laughs> and and we still haven't even gotten the full Epstein list. Exactly. What happened there? I know what, what is even going to go on with some of these people that were responsible for doing this, that, and the other. I mean, they were on video doing heinous things, and none of them have been prosecuted in any way. Will they ever face any repercussion? Well, that's the big question. But part of that, 
that repercussion could just be that people are aware that they were going to these parties or to Epstein Island. And Hollywood, I know, is also going through major disruptions that uh, the normies even are turning away from mainstream entertainment. They just realize how corrupt and how depraved uh, these industries are. And that's how you had to, what you had to do to uh, make it to the top. Oh, yeah. And uh, I believe I do have a clip here of Kamala and uh, Stern talking about uh, Donald Trump. Let's let's play that audio for you, Brad. You know what would help if I unmuted the channel and then press played? Our friend Ukraine doesn't support, therefore, something America should always and has always, by the way, been a champion of, which is the importance of sovereignty and territorial integrity, which means the importance of standing against anyone who tries to take another nation by force. Right. That's what we stand for as Americans, that you don't do that. And if you do that to our friends, we're going to stand with our friends. It's a, you're getting played. And some would say, look, I grew up in the neighborhood. Some would say you're getting punked. Yeah. If you stand in favor of somebody who's an adversary over your friends on principles that we all agree on and you look at it it's it's not only that he says he's going to be a dictator on day one let's, understand let's, what dictators yeah. do they jail journalists they they put people who are protesting in the street in jail he said he said he thinks i just wanted to pause that really quickly and say they were saying that way back in 2016 as well about donald yeah. j trump doing the exact same thing that kamala is repeating right there and then Right. It's a classic case of inversion. Everything she's saying he's going to do, she would do. It's it's pretty crazy. They were saying this back in 2016. I'm telling you, right before the election, I've heard a lot of people saying, oh, they're going to lock up journalists. They're going to lock up this person. They're going to do this and that. And again, here we have Kamala repeating all that. wants to go after Jimmy Kimmel, a comedian. He wants to go after Stephen Colbert and Seth Meyers. What, you know, even if someone had said... Uh, years ago, when, when I remember presidential you know, races, if someone said, oh, Kamala Harris isn't um, a black woman, they would have been out of the, they would have been out of the, yeah. that would have been it, would have been over. I mean, what, who, who, how, how do you challenge that? And that was a clip from uh, today's show. Wow. Yeah, well, they'll say anything to try to <laughs> get a vote. It's pretty outrageous. I mean, to see that and hear that interview was uh, really something else and according to harris her own mother fired her from her job by the way her mother used to work for some company that was trying to create cures for breast cancer i believe and that's all you really needed to hear your own mother fired you for incompetence you know if your own uh, mother fired you i mean come on we are so screwed if she wins <laughs> we really are but and yes they have to steal it of course Right, and yeah, she went on to talk about her favorite cereal and her childhood. I kid you not. <laughs> you know, no one cares about that. The economy is great. Nothing is wrong with it, which is a complete lie. People can't afford anything. I can't afford anything out here in California. And again, word on the street is that even back in the day, Harris wasn't liked by just Republicans, but by Democrats too. Ain't that a shocker? Considering she's as fresh and original as yesterday's garbage bread. And of course, this was also confirmed by my own father, who was a law enforcement officer and worked for the state. He brushed shoulders with her various times, and no one had any positive thing to say about one Kamala Harris. Mm. You know, I, I lived in San Francisco when uh, she was dating the mayor, oh my, Willie Brown. Willie Brown. Who was married at the time. And all of a sudden, Kamala becomes the district attorney without really any experience, but just sleeping her way to the top. And driving a new Mercedes. Yeah, imagine that. Hey, it's taxpayer money. Yeah, the yeah. grafting and the corruption is just off the scale. It really is. And uh, speaking of these sort of things, you know, you have all kinds of people out there who look down at people that that they're like on welfare, social, you know, all this sort of a thing. They, they look down on these people, but in hindsight, uh, there's corporate welfare as well. I mean, all these people get get money uh, in one way or another, doing nothing basically. So I always found that kind of amusing to me personally. But 
Back to the point, you know, I really enjoyed Howard Stern during the early 2000s, back when Artie Lang was on the show and Howard wasn't trying to appeal to the likes of Hollywood and the feminist men and women out there. And his show now is completely unlistenable. He's way out of touch with his own audience, uh, Brad. You hate to see it, but it's time for him to finally retire and, and just enjoy life already, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. I, I can't listen to that guy. It's, it's bad, so Brad. Sad. It got yeah. really bad. And again, I I loved Howard at one time, loved his show, but it just really went downhill here in the late 2000s. It was just, it just got so bad. And I won't be listening to it, by the way, anymore, obviously, but I, I had to listen to this interview just so you won't have to. But I'm mm. sure most of you won't won't be listening, but I'm sure most of you will actually, unfortunately, catch wind of it. It'll be headline news, I'm sure, all by tomorrow and all over social media. It's also gross, Brad. It is terrible. Did you and, ever, did, uh, by the way, did you ever listen to Howard at all, at all at any time? A little bit when he was on uh, terrestrial radio. Oh, okay. I remember we used to tune in and uh, sometimes if I was working on a job, some people would really like to hear it. So only then. I never really sought him out. Oh, I understand. never really liked his, yeah. Yeah, it was a pretty hit or miss, especially back in those days. My goodness. Uh, but yeah, Brad, always a honor and pleasure to have you here on the program. We kind of went over, kind of went a little over the time thing here, but that's okay. But Brad, I mean, it's always a honor and pleasure to have you here, truly. And I hope to see you in person uh, soon, my friend. Yeah, we were meant to uh, go to an outdoor festival this year, and a wildfire broke out and canceled it. So hopefully the next one, we'll get a chance to hang out again. But Absolutely. Always talk to you too, Michael. Yeah, Thanks. thank you so much, Brad, for your time. And, of course, that's bradolson.com and cccpublishing.com. Go and get the books. Uh, the Beyond the Esoteric. Escaping Prison Planet, one of my favorite books, by the way. I always read that one. That's a, it's a good one. A good book to have out there when you're enjoying coffee or when a stumbling person comes through your door and they see that book laying on that coffee table. It's a good way to get things started. <laughs> they often uh, walk out with that person, too. So maybe write your name in the book. But it's got a lot of the topics we are talking about here tonight, Michael, including a chapter on geoengineering. And I reference and cite my sources. So, uh, yeah, get your hand on one of those books and hang on to it because we might need some reading material if the lights go off. Very nice. Brad, I will talk to you on the other side, my friend. You bet, Michael. Nice talking to you again. And there he goes, boys and girls. That was Mr. Brad Olson. I hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. It's always a honor to have him here on the program. And Brad is a good guy. If you have never spoken to the man himself, if you have never gone to any of these conferences, I recommend that you do. It's a good time. You talk to all kinds of colorful people, very friendly people, great people, very giving people, very awesome people. But yes, I do want to give a special thank you to all of you out there for pressing play here tonight over on the Real Deal Media Network, as I like to call it. That's realdealmedia.tv. Special thanks to Dean Ryan, the man of the hour. And much love and respect to all of you out there who listen to this. And of course, if you want more content, please go to patreon.com forward slash Michael Deacon and you get bonus material not found anywhere else. And of course, you can listen to this program in your car. Search the Michael Deacon program wherever you listen to podcasts, and I will be there. Once again, boys and girls, always fun to talk to anybody out there. And with that said, the world is a mysterious place, and life itself is a mystery. Until next time, good night.